is simply about respect. Mm. Aggression does not carry respect with it. Right. Assertion does. Assertion goes after the same thing aggression does. It just does it differently. And it does it in a way where people are more willing and likely to accept what it is that you need or that uh, that you need to have done. Mm -hmm. So, these, the, you know, the consistency about those three things, the, the clarity, the consistency and the respect, you know, I think the one in the middle, the consistency is what everything else rides on. Oh, yeah. You've got to be willing to go back again and again and again and again consistently for a period of time before people will begin to take you seriously or before they're really going to listen to what you have to say. Welcome to another episode of What to Say and How to Say It. Today, we're going to be talking about what to say to increase the chances that you're actually going to be heard. Like, no joke, right? I'm sure you've had interactions with people where you have a thing that is important for you to have them understand. You just want to feel understood. And it's not happening. And maybe you're dealing with somebody that's like, no, I get you. I hear you. I understand you. And you're like, no, no, they don't. <laughs> it's just crazy. Or maybe you've tried 28 ways a Sunday to explain yourself and it's just not working. Well, it's important in mutually respectful relationships for both people to experience what we call reciprocity. You've got to have equal contribution in transparency and understanding and be a good friend if you're going to have a decent relationship. So today we're with our favorite licensed professional counselor, Kyle Hargrove, and we're going to be picking apart this particular topic. Before we dig into deeply, though, I want to refer you back over to our website, greaterimpact.org, where you can grab our free ebook, a little PDF on how to stop walking on eggshells, because that will help you in your relationships as well. So Kyle, this topic of being heard, it's a thing. It is really a thing. And you might be surprised or, you know, our, our listeners might be surprised at how frequently in coaching and therapy, we come across people who say, I just feel like I'm not heard. I feel like nobody hears me or nobody takes what I have to say seriously, um, or I get taken advantage of all the time. And as much as I try to avoid that with the things I say, nobody pays any attention. Mm. Yeah, that is common. So what do you think is going on there? It could be uh, a variety of different things that, that cause this kind of a problem or this kind of a feeling. Uh, truthfully, someone might feel this way and it's not true at all. Mm. Um, that's probably not where we'll steer today, but but that's just one of the possibilities is that you, you may not feel like you're being heard, but that may just be a different style of communication uh, from someone on the other side. You might expect them to communicate directly back to you and they don't. Mm -hmm. um, you might be, expect them to be a little more vibrant about that communication and they're, you know, they're, they're more muted about it. It may be something that they're thinking about and they'll respond to you later. Who knows? But if in fact you are in a situation where you have important things to say. You have feelings to express. Uh, you have things that you need in a relationship. It, it's imperative that we that we have the comfort and the freedom to know that when we do share these things with people, that we're going to be listened to and heard. And there's a difference between listening and hearing. No, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. You know, let's explain that. Because the, the, I think there's people that do not understand that, like for real. Yeah. And actually, it kind of it, it, it may work to flip from what we're actually talking about today. But um, we all hear whether we try or not. We hear things in our sleep. Mm. So we're definitely not making an attempt to hear them, but we hear them. They wake us up. You know, it, it's just something that happens uh, physically with the way God made our bodies. But we don't all listen. Mm. Okay. And sometimes we listen for one purpose when actually we need to be listening for another purpose. Most of the time, what that is, is it's a listening process that I'm listening to you so that I know what to say back yeah. instead of listening to you so that I can let you know that I understand what you have to say. 
You know, so listening to reply versus listening to understand is what we're talking about here. Well, and don't you see a lot of couples that have challenges in their relationship that that listening to reply thing is really, really focusing on I'm going to win this debate. Oh, yeah. Those are those are people who've not yet learned that these conversations usually surrounding a conflict. These conversations need to be about resolution rather than winning or losing, being right or being wrong. Mm -hmm. And so when we finally develop the maturity and the understanding and the willingness to go into those conversations and say, let's fix it, let's resolve it uh, together. Uh, then they begin the, that process. It's it almost it just like turns something on. It says, "I want to listen to understand you," instead of just listening. So I have something to say back. When I was in coach training, doing couples work um, the, for the coaching certification for uh, married couples, they had this couple that um, they were <laughs> the coach that was leading the training was going to demonstrate for us how to do coach work in this space and i think she i i listened to this and i kind of went wow she could have started with an easier couple like the the two of them just right out of the gate were going at it and um there wasn't a lot of coaching happening <laughs> there wasn't a lot of listening happening the the first person to speak was well you always and you never and you said da 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 and i'm thinking da 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 and you and here's your terrible intent and then the other person launched right back with the same kind of diatribe about their position. And it was just an argument. Like that's all that was happening. And the coach let it go on. And I thought, yeah, I'm never, I'm never going to do it this way. And I don't right, wrong or whatever. I don't, I do it the way we did at Dale Carnegie as I interrupt people. And I don't let them damage the relationship further. <laughs> like we're not going to hurt anybody today. Like foul. I'm calling foul. I'm calling time out. We're just, no, let's learn a skill here let's first learn how to speak and and you can't the first rule is you can't say you <laughs> so we had to learn some of these things but you have some pointers today for us on how to be heard if you're the communicator well to, to begin with uh, we we noted one area where just communication doesn't happen and that's when the other person is not listening to understand. Let's pick up a couple of other areas uh, to, to recognize before we start with the actual ways to clarify that. Okay. I don't like to use this word a lot, but sometimes we have to. So I'm going to start with saying the person that you're talking to uh, at a minimum is selfish. Uh, at a maximum, they can be narcissistic hmm. and they don't care to listen to you. They're not going to listen to you. They don't respect what it is that you have to say. That could be for a various number of reasons, for various numbers of reasons. Uh, not the least of which is maybe you're not clear and consistent with, with the things that you do have to say. So it can be, you know, things like uh, not listening to understand, not caring, or and this is the most difficult one sometimes to accept and to absorb. We may have trained people to react to us this way. Yeah. And the way that we do that typically is we allow our pleaser to come out. You know, we, we want to be a pleaser. We want to be, we always want people to like us. We want them to be okay with us. We want things to be peaceful. We want things to be okay. We want things to go smoothly and we will do anything to make those things happen. Usually to the point of being, manipulated and taken advantage of mm -hmm. and even sometimes abused if this is something that is true about us consistently over time we usually end up feeling like we're abused mm. you know and at a very minimum manipulated frequently the truth of the matter there is we've taught people we've trained people to do these things to us because we always say yes yeah we didn't speak up we didn't, we didn't say no, up. stop. We didn't have boundaries. We didn't, we were lying, basically. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard sometimes to look inward and say, are they treating me this way? Because I've taught them that it's okay to do that and say, yes, <laughs> that's a hard yes to give yourself hmm. because then you have to take accountability. You have to kind of scrub things and scratch them all off and start over again. 
But if you're going to start over, here are the things that I would recommend that you look at in terms of being heard, taken seriously, to, to have what you have to say be respected by other people. And there are three things. Be clear, be consistent, and be respectful. Clarity, consistency, and respect. Those are three things that all of us can do. We may need a little bit of work. And I think the biggest part of it is, is developing the courage to push forward with those things in the face of a history of not being heard, not mm -hmm. being taken seriously. So the first one is clarity. This is, simply means learning to send a message, to say something, to have an interaction with someone where the words that you say clearly outline what it is that you need or that you want. Mm -hmm. You don't leave things open-ended. You make sure that you're very clear and you're very concise about what it is that you need or you want. Well, and don't you find sometimes people get pulled into side conversations and get taken off topic and start kitchen sinking or whatever, instead of let's have one thing and stay focused on that one thing? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and a lot of people are masters at that. They see what's coming and they, they want to deflect it. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, they'll put their shield up and it'll bounce off and go a different direction. And I'm not very good at geometry, so I don't know what the angles are, but I do know they go different directions or sometimes they come right back at you. Yeah. But, but that's what a lot of people are good at. I've got to come to you and say, Nina, this is something that I want and, or something that I need. And I, I, you know, I want to make sure that you understand what I'm saying, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. this is what I need from you mm -hmm. in this situation. Uh, it might be that you're setting a boundary. And so you have to very clearly explain what the boundary is and why it is that you need to have that boundary. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say, I need this boundary. We talked about boundaries a lot last week in our podcast. Um, and and, and uh, it's one thing to say, I need the boundary, but it's another thing for everyone that is going to be affected by it to understand why it's important, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, a husband could come to a wife and say, uh, okay, I, I need to set a boundary. And that means from Saturday morning at 11 a.m. until Sunday night about 10, uh, I need you not to talk to me because I'm going to be watching football. Okay, now that's that's a boundary, but but it's not a good one. Well, it's, and a, it's a respect on her. Right. Right? It, 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 there are expectations that are going to go yeah. in there, uh, and, and, and some that don't need to be met. So, you know, <laughs> It's important that we're able to explain to people why it is that the boundary is necessary and that it, you know, it fits the situation. The second thing is being consistent. If we react or respond to things or communicate about things one way, one time, then we need to make sure that we're doing the same or something close to it in another situation. Uh, when we discipline our children, it's imperative that we're consistent in how we do that. And if a particular behavior is disciplined one time and it occurs again, it needs to be disciplined the next time as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, you can't, you can't pick and choose when you, you know, or, or if you're going to exercise discipline. So when I'm coming to you about a want or a need uh, after the first time, then in other situations where that want or that need pops itself up, I need to be asking for something similar or consistent in the, in the situations down the road. Um, it's not fair to people to ask them to hear you, to respond to you uh, in, in one way and then come back in a similar situation and ask for something totally different. Mm -hmm. And believe me, if, if, if there's a little bit of uh, friction in that relationship, somebody will pick up on that and they will run with it and, and you'll not like the result. Right. Uh, inconsistency or is and when we're upset with each other, uh, we take the concept of inconsistency and we use the word hypocrisy. Oof. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, man, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that is very true. It's, uh, it is not necessarily that we're, that we're 
hypocritical or that we're intentionally being a hypocrite, but sometimes inconsistency can look a lot like hypocrisy and it will be used that way in a conflict when people aren't being fair how they fight. Well, and it honestly, it dam it's disrespectful to ourselves and the other person and it damages our credibility. So we have to, we have to be focused on, okay, what do I, we have to know? What do we want? We have to be clear about that and we have to consistently ask or respond with it, right? Because exactly. if we're not, we, maybe we don't really want that. So why do we ask for it in the first place? Like we have to really know what it is we want in the first place to be able to be clear or consistent. So that's useful. So what's right. the last one? The last one is one that people go, huh? You know, a little bit like that, but uh, it's to be respectful. A lot of times when we go to someone, we're upset, maybe something has happened that we didn't appreciate or don't like, and we're going to go say, you know, we're going to speak our peace, so to speak. And, uh, and we want to be heard and we want to be taken seriously. And, but we're upset. A lot of times when we're upset, we don't have the tools in our skill tool belt to communicate clearly and consistently yeah. and be respectful in how we do it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it, 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 it might be necessary to tap the brakes and, and take a little break before we actually move through with this conversation. But the bottom line is at the end of the day, we've got to be respectful in terms of how we present it. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm presenting it to someone who I feel like has wronged me, I have to do it in a respectful manner. Okay. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, a lot of people that don't get heard, don't get heard because they've trained people, you know, that they don't have to, they've, they'll do anything to please. And even being respectful feels like an effort in futility. Well, I am respectful. I ask them, I beg them, uh, you know, well, you shouldn't be in a position. That's not respectful. <laughs> no, you shouldn't be in a position where you have to do that. If you've had to do it too many times, then you're, you're probably the problem. Yeah. Um, it can't, it's not that it can't be fixed, but you're creating a scenario that frustrates you so much and you're pointing the finger at somebody else when it's actually your own fault. Right. But, but these are things that have to be recycled and done time and time and time again, especially if there's a lengthy history of not being heard or not being mm -hmm. taken seriously. Uh, they're not going to stop and just begin the first time you do this. Exactly. Uh, you know? So sometimes you're going to have to develop a new vocabulary word. You know, no. All right. And it doesn't always require an explanation. Hey, can you, will you? Da, da, da. No, not this time. And they'll probably be waiting for you to explain, explain, explain. No, you don't explain that. If well, that's one of the not, big, that's one of those big differences between men and women. You know, women explain all the time. And men typically don't. They no is a complete sentence for them. Yeah which I admire and respect because that then says my, I view my own opinion as, you know, profitable. I'm not ego egotistical, egomaniac here, but it, no is a complete sentence. Like I know what I think, I know what I want. And right now that ain't it. And I also don't think that people understand that the more emotional we are in the way we communicate, the more disrespectful we're being towards ourselves and oh, yeah. others yeah well you know where the explaining thing came from the women being more explainers than the men it happened mm. in the 60s when we when uh, people watched on tv lucy you got some <laughs> splaining to do oh sure sure <laughs> that's okay yeah that's a that's yeah. a that's a fact i mean you can check that all day long that's not disinformation that's not awesome <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Men are more direct and to the point most of the time. And mm -hmm. and men, if they say no, they don't they don't mind saying no and turning around and going back to what they were doing. Uh, well, and I think a lot of this is, you know, if you do the big five personality index, the um, on average, women are more agreeable than men. So they're going to have more pleasing people, pleasing behaviors, which direct communication is not a people pleasing behavior. Mm -hmm. But it is a behavior that will earn you respect and, and, and it is assertive and it's actually very effective. You can you can cushion and you can be direct without being people pleasing. Yeah. And, and the, the benefit of being assertive or aggressive or not the benefit. The objective may be the same, 
Okay, but the difference in going after the objective aggressively or going after it assertively is simply about respect. Mm. Aggression does not carry respect with it. Right. Assertion does. Assertion goes after the same thing aggression does. It just does it differently. And it does it in a way where people are more willing and likely to accept what it is that you need or that uh, that you need to have done. Mm -hmm. So, these, the, you know, the consistency about those three things, the, the clarity, the consistency and the respect, you know, I think the one in the middle, the consistency is what everything else rides on. Oh, yeah. You've got to be willing to go back again and again and again and again consistently for a period of time before people will begin to take you seriously or before they're really going to listen to what you have to say. Yeah. When they see that, they're going to know, when they see the consistency, they're going to know you mean business. Mm -hmm. For parents, being, con being clear, consistent, and respectful equals that's final. Right. And parents was always, always saying, why don't my kids take me seriously? When I say no, why do they come back from a different angle and try it again? No, but because you're probably, you're not consistent. Mm -hmm. So again, they're riding, you know, they're riding the back. Consistency is the horse and the other two are the riders, you yep. know, and um, yep. they have to go together. And if, if we're going to be heard, we've, we've got to learn how to, to speak effectively to the people that have not been hearing us. Well, what I love about this is that it, it's pretty clear and simple, you know, be clear super clear concise that matters then be consistent and be respectful those three things are things that we need sound really simple a little bit hard to do consistently but when we do those things we can actually impact and change all of our relationships which is yeah. what we're here for you know and, and have you how many times you know in a previous life because <laughs> I'm, I'm certain you do this now how many times in a previous life did you need to have that conversation and you just marched in and started in? And no. about halfway through, you thought yes. to yourself, I, I shouldn't be standing here doing this right this now. This is a terrible time. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, understand that that the, these types of conversations that they you need to spend a little time with yourself. Mm -hmm planning things out, making sure that you're in a mind space that, you know, that is gonna allow you the clarity, the consistency, and the respect, you know, allow you to be those things. Uh, know what you're going to say before you go in. Have a plan. You know, don't go sharing problems with people without possibility of some solutions to, to have in your pocket as well. That's just kind of a good idea. So know how you're going to go about this and what mm -hmm. you're going to say and how you're going to say it. Oh, look at that. What to say and how to say it. Yeah, there you go. We accomplished yeah. that. I think it is. Yeah. You know, one of the things I, I say to somebody about once to three times a week is stop managing, stop leading by complaint. That never works. And so your point to figure out some solutions, make sure it's a good time. You know, you go, you got to be proactive. You got to be a leader to facilitate good communication. And all of us are expected to grow and mature in this area. Like, God didn't say, okay, I've made you this way. Now you are. No, we're supposed to mature. We're supposed to love and, and we, we're terrible at it. So we have to learn how to do that. And I think this is loving behavior to make um, people know where they, to help people know where they stand with us by being clear, by being consistent, by being respectful. It just benefits relationships. And it also gives uh, Christians, I think in general, a better name because we're so huh, wishy-washy and then we're terrible. Like the, you look at the images of us in the media uh, of being protesters or being pushovers, like there's these two extremes and you see people in Christian marriages and it's like, well, what actually works? Well, it's all right there in the Bible and it's all supported by data. And a lot of it boils down to these three very simple, concise rules that you gave us today, things to think about, which is be concerned. Which are, at, yeah, the end of the day, yeah. at the end of the day, they're intentional. You can't, you can't go and pull this off without a, a you know, heavy dose of intentionality. If you're going to, you know, allow yourself to spend the time thinking this through and preparing yourself, that's, that's what being intentional is all about. Mm. I don't want to just go in and splat something against the wall and hope it sticks. You know, I want to prepare it. I want to think it through. I want to pray about it. Even I want to make mm -hmm. sure that this is meaningful and that it has a purpose other than for me, just, you know, to emotionally throw up. Well, you've taken away 
all of the excuses that anybody has for being a victim. You know that, right? <laughs> Be intentional. You know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, right? Like, we have to take responsibility for the outcomes of some of our conversations. Are we doing everything we can? Yeah. Do we have the right intention? Are we even being intentionally? Are we even trying? Right. right. In the first place. So that's, that's a great, great thought to end our time together is be intentional. And those last three things, one more time, send them home. Clear, concise, and respectful. Great. Thanks so much for popping in. If you enjoyed today's podcast, hop on over to the next one. Well, you'll learn a little bit more about how to do conflict and what to say and how to say it.